Are you looking to learn how to build your cloud computing career when you have limited experience? I'm going to show you why there's no such thing as no experience and how you can use your current life experience to help you get your first cloud architect job. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we are an organization dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing careers. And today's video, we're going to talk about showing the employer that you're the right person for the job so you can get your first cloud architect job and you can go from cloud certified to cloud hired. So let's begin with the concept. There is no such thing as no experience. And we're going to talk about why. Everything you've done in your life has shaped you. And if you can show how your experiences can make you better at your job, it will substantially help you get hired. So I want to begin with that concept. There is no such thing as no experience, no matter how many times you hear this. And I will show you why. But why does the employer care about experience in the first place? The employer cares about experience for one reason and one reason only. They want to know you're capable and competent of doing the job. So if you lack experience, you're going to have to show them your capabilities in another way. See, when we interview candidates, we don't just rank the candidate based on experience. We rank them on a number of factors and we average them out into a score. So if 50% of the score is based upon competency and 25% is based upon soft skills and 25% is based upon other factors, we can bring up your intangible factors to make you look better so that your average score might actually be better than someone with a lot of experience. But part of that is getting people to know what is your current experience and how it can help them in their job, how your experience can help them achieve their mission. So let's talk about that. So I said no one has no experience, and that's true. So let's look at life experiences that people typically have. Were you in the military? Well, if you were, it shows that you can follow directions and it shows that you can work in a team. Two critical components for any job. What if you played a team sport? Well, that shows motivation. It shows competitiveness, which employers absolutely love. And it shows teamwork. All things that are going to make you look better if you can translate that and show that to the employer. Do you interact with people in your last job? Did you have to work and resolve a lot of conflicts? Maybe you were in customer service. Well, if you were in customer service, you know how to deal with people at their worst. That is a valuable skill in any tech career. So really the key is basically showing how your past experience can help you in your future job. And I'm going to use me as a perfect example. I started my career working in internal medicine. I was a nurse practitioner. I, in fact, I paid my way through school by being a paramedic and I built some computers as a hobby on the side. I found that no matter what I did, I love tech and I wanted a tech career. So what did I do? How did I get my first tech job? I will tell you that I went from a nurse practitioner to a senior network engineer at one of the largest internet service providers in the world in a matter of weeks. And during that time, all I did was find ways that I could show how my current and past experience could help my future job and study to build experience at home to get real certifications that mattered and focus certifications that could show that them that I was the right person for the job. So what did I do? First, I got to tell you, I locked myself in a room for four days and passed the CCNA exam. It was not fun in four days. Then I will tell you that I spent 10 days passing the four tests that were part of the Cisco Certified Network Professional. I can tell you anybody can do this. I was just willing to basically lock myself in a room for 18 hours a day for 10 days straight and pass the exams. Now, I knew that the certifications really in and of themselves didn't mean a lot. So what I did was I actually built myself a test lab. I bought all these routers and really cheap. They were used old on eBay. I built myself a lab and I practiced, I practiced, I practiced. I built networks. I got experience at home. But then it was like, okay, I have experience, but now it's time to apply for jobs. Everybody's going to look at him. Oh my God, Mike has a master's degree in nursing and Mike's Cisco certified, but I've never worked in tech before. So how could I convince him I was the right person for the job? What I did is I showed them that my experience mattered. So let's talk about this. Madison taught me how to basically work independently and interdependently. See, in medicine, we're pretty independent. You see a patient, you evaluate them, you treat them usually with a prescription, you send them home. But it also taught me that there were things that I just didn't know. I know internal medicine, but what about cardiology? What about nephrology? What about endocrinology? It taught me to know what I know and know what I don't know. Key attributes for any tech professional. And I'll tell you how I sold that to the manager. And it taught me how to get help and when I knew it, but it taught me independence and interdependence. 
something else came out of medicine is it taught me crisis management. See, in medicine, we have emergencies and how you act in that emergency has a direct impact on the patient's outcome. So if you can stay calm and if you can keep your head about you, the patient will do better. Well, I will tell you in any technology career, things will break. And when things break, people get really frustrated and really angry. And if you can be calm and you can keep your head about you, you can solve these problems better. And not only can you solve these problems better, you can improve the customer experience for the customer. And at the end of an outage, they might even like you more or respect you more based upon how hard you work to solve their problem and how good you were. So medicine taught me lots of different things. It taught me what I knew and what I didn't know. And it also taught me crisis management. Well, guess what else medicine taught me? In medicine, someone comes in and they have a problem. It taught me how to ask the right questions and get an answer. It taught me how to listen. It taught me to be logical and okay, these symptoms, which is the same thing you would see on a network or, or a cloud, okay, these, these logs are basically showing you something. So it taught me how to basically make a diagnosis and then build a plan or a treatment plan. Well, I will tell you when things aren't working in networking or telecommunications or voice over IP or cloud computing, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to figure out what's going on, make a diagnosis and build a plan to solve it. Just like I did in medicine. So wait, that's the same too. Now, something medicine taught me, which is probably the best thing that I ever learned was how to communicate with people, how not to offend people, how to ask them questions and get answers. See, the thing is with communications, the better information you have, the better decisions you'll be able to make. And in medicine, if you don't get the right, the right information, someone could die. Well, you know what? The same thing happens in tech. Imagine designing an architecture for a customer without knowing the requirements. And I will tell you, most of the problems I've seen is specifically due to people not knowing which questions to ask so they can build the right design. So medicine taught me that too. Medicine taught me one other lesson. It taught me to be detail oriented and see in medicine, if you make mistakes, someone could die. In computing, if you make mistakes, an outage could occur, which means, you know, financial losses. So I learned how to be atten attentive to detail. And now medicine brought me one last thing. And then I'm going to talk about how I convinced the hiring manager and how you can too, that your experience matters. Medicine taught me to bring out the best in others. See, when you're sick, you're tired, you don't feel well, you're not happy. And if you have to start exercising, following a new diet, taking three medications that don't make you feel well, but you need that so you don't have a heart attack or a stroke, it taught me how to convince the patient what they needed. Well, you know what? In, in networking and in telecommunications and in internet service providers and cloud computing, it really doesn't matter. You need to bring out the best in people because you need a supportive team. You need to bring out the best in, in your organization and you need to bring out the best in your customer. And the better your communication and collaboration strategies, the better you'll do. So what did I do? How did I get my first job? How did I go from medicine straight to the senior network engineer at one of the world's largest internet service providers? I did two things. One is I built myself a lab and I got myself experience. On my resume, I basically put a research and development section that talked about all the things that I did so I could show there was experience and in case there were resume scanners, which we had some 20, 25 years ago for, that used OCR, at least when they saw my, wor my Word document and they ran a character recognition scan on it, they could see, okay, he's done some tech stuff. And then it bypassed things. And we'll talk about it in another video, how to go straight to the hiring manager and avoid a, the HR trap. HR are wonderful people, but when you're new and inexperienced, sometimes the hiring manager is your best bet. But that's the topic of another video. But what I did is I got some practice and then I really thought about it and I said, okay, I'm gonna be on this interview. Now, the interviewer is gonna basically say, no computing degrees, no computing background, medicine guy, probably great if, he, if I'm sick, but how's that person gonna work? And I thought about every way, like I just described to you, that my career and background in medicine could be translated into a great technology career. And when I had that interview with the hiring manager, I can tell you a few things that happened. We had an initial conversation based on soft skills and these things went really well. He asked me a few technical questions and I answered them. He asked me a technical question that I didn't know and I said, I'm sorry, sir. Up until five days ago, I was practicing medicine as a nurse practitioner in Philadelphia. I said, so I haven't had the opportunity to learn this, but I love to learn. I'm highly motivated and I know my background that's taught me this, 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 and this. I can learn that very fast. You know what happened? The hiring manager basically said to me, oh my God, you were in another career in a few days ago and you actually know this? He's like, 
I can work with you. He said, you're going to be the best hire I've ever had. He said, because here's the thing, you know as much as the people that I've had that have worked here, but you're fresh. He said, you have no bad habits. He said, you haven't been doing things wrong forever. Basically, you understand how it works and you know what you know and you don't what you don't know. So all I need to do is do a little teaching and mentoring and you're going to be a rock star. You know what happened? I took that job. Not only did I take that job, I did well in that job. Everything I learned, I taught to a lot of other people. The next thing I realized, I'm the team lead for the design engineering team, which is now architecture. We used to call it design engineers. And I'm literally a super, super senior engineer. In fact, at one point, I was leading all the efforts and I'd have 10 people come to my cube for mentoring all day long. And I loved it. I thrive because I used my past experience to make my, be my new job better. And that's what I'm here to tell you. There is no such thing as no experience. Every one of you, if you look at your background, at your experience, some of those characteristics will make you a better cloud architect. So find them, write them down, put some correlation to it in your, in your resume. When you make social media posts, show how you are gonna be a better cloud architect based upon things, but really prove it to people, show it to people. You are in charge of your career, and if you're in charge of your career and you put your time, effort, motivation, and focus, no one can stop you. So that's how I believe that there is no such thing as no experience. Please take this lesson and other lessons and please try and apply them to help you get your first cloud architect job. Thank you for watching this video on cloud, on getting your first cloud architect. Let me tell you about some few things about our organization. We have a get your first cloud architect job program. It's coming on March 1st. This will include a 16 week program to really take you from cloud certified to cloud hired. We know all the steps to make you look great when it comes to interviews and potential future employers. We also have an absolutely free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate eBook. The link is in the description below. We published this book for one reason. We saw that it was very hard to find what we found to be really good high quality training to pass the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate exam and still have enough knowledge left over to actually have a cloud computing career. So we give this book away completely free. Please download our AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate eBook. The link is in the description below. We can basically say that you can actually use that book and get AWS certified. Everything you needed is in that book and it's completely free. Thank you for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on another cloud computing video very shortly. Take care and be well.